We're inspired by women who have restarted their lives using health and fitness. We hope you are too. I'm Gwyneth Paltrow. And I'm Tracy Anderson. This is The Restart Project. Shannon's restart took a long time as she struggled with addiction. Her journey was really as much about finding the peace within herself as it was about finding the way out. Today, I decided to run a 5K, which is very intimidating and scary, especially because I've never did one before. It's been a real long journey for me. You know, I eat healthier now and I exercise. Every day I'm trying to better my life. I know I couldn't have said that a year ago. So when did you first think that you might have a problem with alcohol? I was in my mid-20s when I was going out and partying a lot with friends. And then I realized that, you know, I was drinking a lot more than my friends were drinking. That's when my addiction started kicking in. How did you used to drink when you were in your darkest period? I was definitely a binge drinker. And I would drink until I would either black out or there would be no more alcohol. I'd wake up early in the morning just because I know the liquor store opens at 6. Wow. Drinking stuffed and bottled up all these feelings and emotions that I didn't want to feel. What was the pain that was underneath that? I was uncomfortable in my own skin. I didn't know how to handle that, and so alcohol just became my friend. That was hell. I grew up in Petaluma, California. I had a good childhood. My sister, Christine, and I, we were best friends, but then as I was drinking more and more, she wouldn't answer the phone. I wasn't who I used to be. My parents, they didn't want me around because anytime I did come over, you know, I was, I was drunk. My drinking was just completely out of control to where I put myself in the hospital. My sister would tell me like, Shannon, you need, you need to get help. And my parents, they were like, you know, you can't drink anymore. But and I didn't want to stop drinking. My family, and I wanted that bond back that I had lost, but they didn't want to have anything to do with me. That was painful. Was there a moment that was, you know, your bottom? When I got my fourth DUI, my parents decided to not bail me out, so I stayed in jail for two months and it really gave me time to sit with myself. I spent Christmas and New Year's in jail. I felt shame and guilt and, you know, it's sad to disappoint your family, and, you know, especially when you're saying that you're gonna get help, you're gonna get help, and your family's sick of you. I knew I was done, and I know I've said that before, but this time I was just like, okay, just surrender and just do whatever you have to do. I knew that if I didn't get help, I would never get my family back. I went into treatment, and that was the best thing that's ever happened to me. I was exercising, I was eating better. I was really scared, but I went in there with an open mind and being ready, willing, and able to do the footwork. That's very brave of you. There's still sometimes a stigma around alcoholism, and especially for women, and it's so inspiring to say, but look what I've done, look at the decision that I've made to love myself, yes. you know, to make that commitment to yourself. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, extraordinary. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I saw my sister there. That was such a surprise. Are you, are you ready for this? Yes. Yeah? All right, let's go. Three, two, one. <laughs> Today, I have that connection back with my sister. Just seeing her there was like, all right, we're, you know, we're doing this together. 
You know, she's my best friend, and I'm glad that I have her back now. I love you, Christina. I believe I'm on the right path. I just needed the tools. Now I gotta do the footwork. You know, it's one day at a time, and I'm still learning who I am, but I like myself now, and I feel very grateful for who I am today. When I crossed the finish line, I was so shocked. I didn't even see my mom and my brother until they were five feet away from me. I didn't know you were coming. I am so proud of you, Shannon. You know that. Dad and I just love you, and we're so happy. Thank you. We're so happy for you. It was special to see them there and that, you know, they were there for me. We're really proud of you. Thank you. You know, to see you get active again and to be running and to work out and take care of yourself, it means so much to me. You know, I know you guys sometimes like didn't understand my addiction, but you, you know, supported me. Now we feel like we have you back. You yeah. know, we have the real, the old Shannon back. Yeah. To have my family back, it touches a place in my heart that it's hard to put into words, but knowing that they are there for me now. Love you guys. Love, love you too. too. It made me feel like like, hey, I can do this. You know, you're, you are doing it. Just, just keep doing it. This is a story about what happens when you think you know what your future is going to look like, and then everything changes.